Hello, and this is Dalia again, and we have another story in our friendship stories. We are going to read 101 Dalmatians Friends to the Rescue. <gasps> Yay, you like Friends to the Rescue with the Dalmatians. There they are, Pongo and Perdita. Okay, here we go. You ready? Put it up in the air like this so you can see it. Can you see it like that? All right, here we go. In a townhouse in London, there lived two dogs named Pongo and Perdita, who loved each other very much. Their human pets, Roger and Anita, and a cheerful housekeeper named Nanny, lived with them too. Uh-uh, don't cross your legs. <laughs> they cut off circulation. They were all very happy together. Everyone got excited when they learned Perdita was expecting puppies. Fifteen puppies, Roger explained, on the stormy October night they were born. Pongo beamed. He was filled with pride and love. Outside, lightning flashed and thunder roared. Boom! Suddenly, the front door swung open and revealing a tall, thin woman wrapped in the enormous fur coat. She was nasty Cruella de Vil, an old classmate of Anita's. She had heard that puppies were on the way and had come by and come to buy them. She stroked her fur she str she stroked her fur coat grinning evilly. I'll take them all, she cried. The whole litter. Pongo barked. He didn't like Cruella at all. He decided his puppies would never belong to her. Yeah, she was a bad lady, wasn't she, Scarlet? You think she's bad? I'm afraid we can't give them up, Anita told her. Cruella glared glared. Cruella glared at Roger and Anita and pulled out her checkbook and pen. Don't be ridiculous. I'll pay you twice what they're worth. She shook the pen so hard that ink flew all over Roger and Pongo. Roger was annoyed when pa with Pongo by his side. He declared, we're not selling the puppies. Cruella stormed out the door. I'll get even with you. Just you wait. You'll be sorry, you fools. Weeks passed and the puppies grew strong and healthy. Each night, Patch, Lucky, Rolly, and the others snuggled while Pongo and Perdita took their pets for a walk. One night, while Pongo and Perdita and Roger and Anita were out, two evil men named Jasper and Horace went to the Dalmatians' home and they pushed past Nanny and stole the puppies. Please help, cried Nanny when she realized what had happened, but it was no use. The police couldn't find the puppies, and when Roger and Anita returned, they were horrified. They did not know what they could do. It's all up to us, Pongo told Perdita. Roger and Anita were only human after all. The Dalmatians decided to use the twilight bark. One dog would tell all the other dogs to howl a message. Then the next dog would bark, and one day would howl. One day would howl a message. Then the next day would pass it along, and so on. It was the quickest way for dogs to to send news across the country. The next night, Pongo and Perdita led Roger and Anita to the top of a windy hill in the park. Pongo barked and barked, sending news about the stolen puppies. There was no answer. I'm afraid it's too cold, Perdita said, shivering. There's no one out tonight. Then in the distance, a faint bark sounded. Danny the Great Dane had heard the news. Fifteen Dalmatian puppies were stolen. It was an all-dog alert. Soon the news spread to dogs all over the city, to a Scottish terrier in the sit in the street, to an African in a window, to a poodle in a fancy car, from pet shops to homes, from rooftops to alleyways. The dogs of London passed the message along. They would do whatever they could to help find the missing puppies. The barking reached the edge of London, then beyond. On a grassy knoll past a long, wide creek, an old dog named Tra Towser listened. Then he heard the message to a nearby farm. Inside the barn, a sheepdog named the Colonel perked up his ears. 
15 spotted poodle puddles stolen, he told his friend, cat named Sergeant Tibbs. Two wolves, one yip, and a two, two wolves, one yip, and one wolf, and a wolf. Sounds like puppies, not puddles, the cat said. Then Tibbs remembered he'd heard barking at the old Deville place two nights ago. The missing puppies had to be there. The colonel and Tibbs snuck over to the abandoned castle and spotted the pups. One, two, Tibbs began to count. The stolen, the 15 stolen puppies were there, along with 84 others. Corella DeVille had gotten Jasper and Horace to kidnap the Dalmatian puppies so she could use their fur to make coats. <gasps> That's terrible. She's going to kill the little puppies to make coats? That's mean. The colonel barked the news that he'd found the missing puppies to Towser, who sent it to Danny, who howled to, bon to Pongo and Petita. The puppies have been located somewhere north of here, the Great Dane told them. I'll go along with you as far as Camden Road. Together, they traveled to the city's edge. The Great Dane pointed the way. Contact old Towser. He'll direct you to the colonel, and the colonel will take you to your puppies at, De at the DeVille place. DeVille, Pongo, and Perdita explained. DeVille, Pondo, and Perdita explained. They knew they had to get their puppies quickly. Corella was not to be trusted. Pongo and Perdita plodded through the snow. After a while, they met Towser, then headed toward the colonel. Meanwhile, inside the old DeVille place, Sergeant Tibbs was helping the puppies escape. They hurried through a hole in the wall and down some steps. They hid under the stairs, but soon Horace and Jasper discovered them as the evil men crept toward the puppies. Pongo and Perdita crashed through the window. The two dogs bought, bared their teeth and leaped onto Cruella's thugs. The men fell to the floor. Sergeant Tibbs led the puppies back to the colonel's barn while Pongo and Perdita fought Jasper and Horace. Soon the puppies were re reunited with their parents. Pongo nuzzled them. Is everybody here, he asked. Now, there's 99 of us, cried Patch. Pongo and Perdita decided to take all 99 puppies back to London to keep them safe from Cruella. But they'd have to move quickly to stay ahead of her. We better run for it, says Pongo. How can we ever repay you, Perdita asked Sergeant Tibbs and the Colonel. All in the line of duty, the Colonel replied. Okay, this will be part one and we are going to part two.